So welcome back to Warhammer 40k Darktide. In this video, we're going through the ultimate crafting guide for beginners. And we're going to jump straight into it with the mission terminal, because when you select the mission to play, you're going to be gaining XP, you're going to find crafting materials. But what I recommend, and I've done this pretty much all the way through like levels 1 through 30, is I've always done quick play. I choose my difficulty, do quick play, because if you have a look, you're going to get 20% extra XP for leveling up. You're going to get 10% extra for all of the crafting materials. And then if we look at the bottom right, you'll see all the materials. These are your auto dockets or your gold coins. This this is your plasteel where I've got 3000 and this is your diamantine. All of these materials are really, really important and you're going to need a lot of them. So what I recommend is even if, for an example, you unlock, say, the armory at level 8, I'm not entirely sure which trust level it is, but for an example, you unlock it at level 8, I still wouldn't go spending a load of resources. My highest recommendation, my biggest recommendation is you wait until you are level 30 because that is when you're going to really need to craft some good gear for your character in order to do the higher difficulties because you're just going to build up your materials and stuff faster when you are playing on higher difficulties so make sure you're saving your materials don't go spending them willy-nilly because it's only going to like have a negative effect on you later down the line when you're a higher level and this material i've got 4700 of that's for the weekly we will quickly go through that although it is pretty much unrelated to crafting i mean you can craft some stuff from it but if we run through here and we go this way around you're going to see this little dude standing in the corner this is Sire Milk. This is the weekly. So you get weekly contracts, you earn the currency, and then in the limited time acquisitions, you can get some high leveled stuff. However, when it comes to having a good setup, you're not wanting like 53% damage. That's not going to be helpful for anyone, especially when you're level 30. So when it comes to your weapons, both your primary and your secondary, your melee and your ranged, what you are looking for when you're level 30, you are looking for all of your modifiers to be as close to 80% as they possibly can. When you upgrade the rarity through crafting, it does not do anything to the stats of the weapon. The only thing it does is increase the rating because it's going to give you extra perks and blessings. Then also when it comes to your curios, you're just going to get extra perks. So if we start off with the use of auto dockets, if we come to the armory exchange, we can either go into the requisition tab and we can have a look at what is on sale. This vendor resets, I think it's every 55 minutes. I would just come back once an hour. You're going to have new stuff to buy. So you'll see all the stats here. We've got like a 71% damage there, but we're wanting all of these modifiers to be as close to 80% as possible. So that's, uh, that's terrible with 36%. That's okay, but the stopping power is far too low. We don't really have a lot there. I mean, that's pretty good with the 19% max health. But I'm playing as a veteran, so the max health isn't too great for me. I'd rather toughness on my build personally. So if there's nothing good in there, what you can do is go to Brunt's Armory. And this is where you have the choice to craft. It's just like the base rarity level. But you can craft whichever weapon you want. So say for an example, I really like the... Let's go with a Headhunter Auto Gun. I really like these because they're three round bursts, they're accurate, they're powerful. It's going to cost me 9,200 to craft one. You're going to get one at random, random modifiers and everything like that. So acquiring one, you'll see 71% damage, 60% mobility, so on and so forth. It's not great, but it's not terrible. So if I try and get another one, we've got even worse stats. And then you keep going again, 66% there, 65%. I'll just craft a few of these. So it's going to cost a lot of auto dockets. You're going to need to do missions to actually get good stats on a weapon. You're trying to get a good roll. You can also just take the Emperor's Gift at the end of a run. But I've just spent about 100,000 and I didn't actually get anything worth it. So auto dockets, even though you get a lot of them compared to Plasteel and Diamantine, they are incredibly useful. You're going to use them all the time. So you'll see I crafted a bunch of these. However, I don't really want any of them. My highest rating was 353, but the stats are terrible. They're all sitting around 60 odd percent. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this 334 because it's got it's sitting at around, I'm going to say an average of about 65% for all of the stats. So if I equip that one so that I know the exact one I'm wanting, then what I'm going to do is actually sell the rest besides one. I want to keep one so I can show you something regarding part of the crafting. So if you just click on the item and you hold down X, that's going to sell them. And I'm spending 9,000 on them, but I am getting something back in return when I sell them. So now I've got the weapon that I want to work on and this is it's going to be a real big waste actually doing this and showing you because the stats aren't that high. The modifiers aren't too great. 
But if we come over to the Shrine of the Omnissiah, we go in and what you can do is have a look at your different weapons, your curios and things like that. You have four options here. You can consecrate, you can refine item, re-bless and earn blessing. You'll see here two out of two modifications applied on the selected item. You can only mod two things on the weapon. Your stats or modifiers don't come into this at all. This is for your perks and your blessings to not only increase the weapon's rating, but to also get things you like on it. So you'll see that I've modified both the perks on this purple so that I've got reload speed and ranged weak spot damage because those are perks that I was enjoying at the time of using that weapon. So when you have a gray, if we go into consecrate, this is the very first thing. What this is going to do is increase its rarity. It's not going to affect any of the modifiers, but what it's going to do is give us a new perk. So you'll see here it's going to cost 131 plus steel. So we're going to consecrate it and we got 20% damage to unyielding enemies. So then if we consecrate again, this is where all the resource like material costs come into it. That was 175 plus steel to go up to blue. And we got ghost immune to ranged attacks for 1.2 seconds on a weak spot hit. So that's a tier four blessing. You'll see the IV in this little circle. So that's actually quite a decent blessing. It increases our rating quite a lot as well. But now that we're going from blue to purple, it's not only going to cost quite a bit of plasteel, but it's also going to start costing diamantine. So 350 plasteel, 109 uh, diamantine. So we consecrate, got to purple, and we've got 25% damage, a tier 4 perk, because all of these diamonds are, like, coloured in. Like, they're all filled out. We've got 25% damage to infested enemies. And then if we consecrate again, 613 the plasteel, 263 diamantine. Really, really expensive to do one weapon. But we're going to consecrate it. And we got tier three headhunter, 18% crit chance on weak spot hit until your next crit hit stacks five times. So if you're getting weak spot hits and you're not getting any crits from it, you can get up to 90% crit chance. So now that it's transcendent, like AKA legendary, we cannot consecrate it anymore, but we can now refine it. We can re-bless it and we can earn blessing. That's why I wanted to keep this weapon. What we're going to do is consecrate this quickly until we get a blessing. So that's twice. And there we go. We've got tier three opening salvo. So what we can do with this, we have two modifications available. We can go into refine item and we can change the perks. So for an example, I don't want 20% damage to unyielding enemies. We go into tier four and let's just say for pure example, I want 10% reload speed. I can then spend 88 diamantine, 175 plus steel and 3,500 auto dockets. And I can refine and change the perk. So I want both of my perks to be tier four. So if we refine it, that is now 10% reload speed on the weapon. And you'll see you now get the spanner icon to show you that you've modified that perk. So now when it comes to the blessings, I can't actually re-bless because I haven't earned enough blessings. But if we go into re-bless, what you can do is any of your tiers one through four, any of the blessings you've got, you can equip onto the weapon. So you can do it exactly the same way you refine it and change all the perks over, you can do the same thing with blessings. And that's exactly why I wanted to get this one up to blue, because if we now go into earn blessing, what we are then able to do is take opening salvo, we surrender the weapon, so we give up the weapon, get rid of it, but we then have access to the tier three opening salvo, which is gonna be 18% power on the salvo's first shot. So surrender it, weapon gone, but now what we can do, say we want that on our uh, legendary, our transcendent, we re-bless. We then choose, let's say I want to get rid of Headhunter. We go into our tier three blessings. We've now got opening salvo there. So we can click on that. We can re-bless and we can switch Headhunter out for opening salvo. So the way blessings work, and I actually figured this out really, really late. I think I was already level 30 when I figured this out. But in order to earn blessings so that you can switch them out on your weapons, you can re-bless your weapons, what you need to do is have a weapon that you don't want, and instead of selling it like I did with all of those grades that we crafted in the armory, instead of selling it, you bring it to the Shrine of the Omnissiah, and you earn the blessing from it. So you surrender the weapon, you give it up, you basically dismantle or destroy it, but you take the weapon off and put it into your library. And you can then use that blessing on the same weapon category so with that opening salvo, I can't put that on my spearhead bolt gun because it's a different type of weapon. So it's weapon types. So any headhunter also gun I get in the future, I can put opening salvo on it. And then for an example, if I was to take cavalcade off this spearhead bolt gun, any spearhead bolt gun I get in the future, I can put that blessing onto it. And you have tiers one through four. And if we have a look at my purple, 
This is a sapper shovel. It's only got tier two hammer blow, but if I was to earn the blessing, get rid of the shovel, I can't, I only have one shovel. But if I was to earn the blessing, it would dismantle the weapon so I don't have access to it anymore. But the tier two blessing would go into my library. Then if I ever get another shovel in the future, I can then re-bless it and use hammer blow on that new weapon. So it's very similar when it comes to your curios, except the only thing you can do is you can consecrate it to increase its rarity and you can refine it so that you can change the perks around. Purples are perfect because you can change both the perks, but that means when you're getting your curios, you want them to have really good blessings to begin with because you cannot do anything with them. Like you can't earn the blessing, take 16% toughness off and then go and re-bless Say this 14% and put 16% on that. It doesn't work like that. You have to get the curio with a high blessing to begin with. And then what you can do is refine all of your perks. And what I actually did with these is where I've got toughness for an example. As I was making my way through the levels, getting up to level 30, what I did was actually put XP gains on all of my curios. So when I was like level 28, I had three curios. I had 10% XP on all of them so that I could reach level 30 faster. Then I got to level 30 and I switched them all out. You can switch them out as many times as you want, providing you have the materials available. So if I wanted to put XP on, there's no reason because I'm level 30. But if I did want XP on this curio, then I can spend 2,500 auto dockets, 126 plastil, 63 diamantine and i can change the perk on this curio and the reason i can change this perk over and over again is because it's one of the things i've modified you're limited to two different things that you can modify on any piece of gear so when it comes to you running levels in a dark tide and you're farming for materials you are looking for cylinders for the plastil you're looking for cubes for the diamantine by looking at the material in your like war gear menu for an example you'll see exactly what they look like you get small and large stashes they can be found anywhere random little corners you can find them in the crates that you open up during the levels and obviously a large stash is going to give you more materials than a small stash but even if you're full up say you've got like 50,000 diamantine you don't need anymore still pick it up because it helps other players that are in your strike team when it comes to materials and resources and stuff during missions your ammo is is not shared on dark tide but when it comes to the plastic it comes to the diamantine you don't need to rush around anyone that picks it up during the mission it's going to be awarded to all players both plastic and diamantine are a shared resource in dark tide which is really really helpful because there are a lot of players that are incredibly fast going through crates and just spamming the interact button because they might need an ammo tin and they think they need it more than you. So yeah, I highly recommend do not start crafting and spending all of your resources and stuff until you are level 30. Do quick play from the mission terminal so that you're getting a 10% benefit to your resources every single mission. Not only that, it's going to help you level up faster because you get 20% extra XP. And once you have a bunch of resources, you can go to the armory, you can buy new weapons or you can use the Emperor gift that you was given if you really like the modifiers on it you can consecrate it all the way up to transcendent you can refine it so you can change all the perks around and you can re-bless it if you want to but not only that if you want to keep your blessings from a weapon instead of selling it you can earn the blessing which will dismantle the weapon put it into your library so that you can put it on future weapons and things that you want and remember you are only allowed to modify two things on a single weapon so it might be a blessing and a perk but then when it comes to the curios you can do two perks and that is going to do it for the ultimate crafting guide for beginners in dark tide i hope the video helped you out thank you for watching